Good evening and thank you for joining us for tonight's meeting to discuss zoning changes for uh, James S. Hogg New Tech Center. Uh, my name is Mari Carmen Eroles. I'm with Communication Services. Buenas noches y gracias por participar en esta reunión para discutir los cambios de uso de suelo para la escuela James S. Hogg. Buenas tardes. En unos minutos, uh, buenas noches. En unos minutos vamos a empezar a interpretar al español. Si desea escuchar esta presentación en español, pueden seleccionar la opción en español en la parte derecha inferior de la pantalla, el icono del mundo. Si por algún motivo no escucha al intérprete, regrese al inglés y vuelva a intentar la opción en español. Si aún no funciona, por favor, avísenos a través del chat. Desafortunadamente, la opción de interpretación no es compatible con las computadoras Chromebook. Le recomendamos que intente entrar a la reunión utilizando un teléfono celular iPhone o Android, una computadora PC, iPad or tablet para escuchar la reunión en español. Thank you again for joining us tonight. We will answer questions following the presentation. If you have any questions, please raise your hand using the raise hand icon that's found at the bottom of your screen. We will call your name so you can unmute and share your question. If you prefer, you can also write your questions in the chat and we'll read them out and get you an answer. It is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Casco, principal of the school, to uh, tell us a little bit about um, the, the school and um, how excited we are about the upcoming project. Yes, um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, yeah, we're very excited of the progress that we're making here at Hog New Tech um, Center, uh, especially with the exciting movement here with the new addition to our campus. So we're very excited to hear that. Um, what makes it a little bit unique is that we actually start with six week olds. We have a partnership with Early Head Start. So we start with students at six week olds in their cribs all the way up to fifth grade. Um, and we have a two way track all throughout. So that what makes us a little bit unique here. And furthermore, um, with us learning both English and Spanish, um, we had a little uh, experience with our students um, with uh, STEAM skills. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Um, and now Trustee Mackey, is, are there, uh, is there anything you'd like to share with our community? Just wanna say good evening. Thank you to everyone for joining us, both the team in Dallas ISD, all the parents and community members, uh, Principal Casco and your team. Um, Hog is a phenomenal school. I'm so excited to see it continuing to get the work done on it that it needs to have in order to be an excellent environment for our students to learn. And I look forward to working alongside all of you all in this process and helping move this forward to make sure that Hog is the absolute best building it can possibly be. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for your engagement. And thank you for, for participating tonight as well. And now I would like to introduce our Chief of Construction, Brent Alfred, who will uh, kick off the presentation portion of the meeting. Yes, thank you, Mary Carmen. Uh, as Mary Carmen stated, I'm Chief uh, Brent Alfred uh, over Construction Service and the Bond Program. And it's such an honor to be here serving this community and this bond program. This is the largest bond program in the history of the state of Texas, and you guys are part of it. Uh, we, brought you get, uh, we brought together a great team for you guys with brave architects, your uh, project manager uh, through AECOM, and we have master plan, uh, Carl Crowley. But none of this would be happening without your support of the 2020 bond program and the support of your trustees. So I wanted to give you guys kudos on that. So <clears throat> with that, without further ado, uh, I'll turn it over to Carl. He'll go through uh, uh, his scope of work and then hand it over to our architect. So Carl. Thank you, Brent. Um, as Brent mentioned, my name is Carl Crawley. I'm with Master Plan. We're the zoning and land use consultants for the uh, school district on this project and other projects. Um, tonight, uh, we're going to talk to you about an upcoming zoning case that um, if you received a postcard from me, um, you will uh, get notice from the city about it. And, and the, the zoning request is for a specific use permit, which allows the school, and obviously the school's there and been there for a number of decades, uh, but the city requires in their zoning ordinance, if we do an addition, 
of a certain size, and this is a fairly large addition to the school, we need to come into compliance with the zoning. So that's the reason for the zoning case. There'll be two public hearings for the zoning case, uh, one at the city planning commission, one at the city council. And again, if you got that postcard, you will get a notice of those um, prior to the hearing. We're looking at a hearing date, uh, hopefully, um, in the uh, January timeframe at the planning commission and and um, and just January and February, maybe December and January if we're lucky, um, at the uh, for the planning commission and the city council. So um, you'll be getting information from the city about those. But at this time, I'm going to turn it over and then I'll come back to me when we talk about the traffic management plan. But I'm going to turn it over to the architects to explain the addition and what's going to be happening there at, at Hog Elementary. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Christian Sheridan with Broadway Architecture. Uh, just one second. I am. All right. Um, I'm. Hi, I'm Millie Mehta with Bravi Architecture. Um, and Samuel, do you know who was uh, holding the slides? Uh, yeah, I do have a copy. If you don't have them right there in front of you, uh, it was the same one that we sent. You know that we submitted over. Um, but I can share my screen real quick. All right, are you seeing me? I may not have, uh, mm, can I have sharing yet. rights? I may not, it looks like it's showing, but maybe you don't see it. Um, can you, you give me a presentation? I should, okay. Yeah, you should, it should All be right. available. I'll try that again. See it, do you see it now? Let me back that up. Okay, what about that, you see that? Mm -hmm. No. All right. Let's see. Let's do this. All right. Oh, no, I gotcha. Okay. What about that? Yay. Yes. Okay. We can see it now. All right. Hey, Christian, I can just move through as you um, speak and you, you know, I can just move forward. Okay. Sure. Yeah. I'm uh, familiar with them. We just wanted to be sure that only a few of us controlled the screen. So uh, again, uh, with Brave Architecture, we um, our main base is in Houston, but we're, uh, we, we have experience in, uh, with DISD pr projects as well as uh, Fort Worth ISD. Um, recently, we're just now completing uh, the Tyler Nature Center. So if anybody ventures a little uh, outside the DFW area, the Tyler Nature Center is, is one of our projects that we just completed. So we're excited about that. Um, and we, we uh, have done a number of uh, elementary schools uh, from ground up and renovations. So this one started off a little smaller, uh, but has grown. So we're super excited to be working with the uh, uh, continue working with HOG and, and the principal and AECOM and DISD on on the extension, which is which has really brought about this meeting. And so uh, the goal, um, the goal for this edition is to replace the existing gym and remove the existing uh, temporary uh, classroom buildings that are on the site. So some of the challenges that we're dealing with are the site's topography. Um, it's site, it's, it's drainage, uh, as well as just tying into an existing school um, and some existing easements uh, that are servicing the school. So building off of existing infrastructure, but at the same time, not, not impacting any of the, uh, the landscaping um, or uh, Dallas tree requirements along the way. Uh, 
this is a, a, a rough site plan blocking of uh, showing that work. So you can see the exterior areas that were um, recently uh, improved remain. Uh, it's just kind of replacing footprint for footprint. The uh, impermeable surface is roughly the same. It's very close to what exists on site. And in here, the three classrooms, it's, it's all working off of the main level, uh, but the three classrooms um, will be single story. And then the new gym, which is also a storm shelter, uh, is uh, the much taller structure on the site. And so this is a, this is a rendering from the front um, showing, you know, you probably won't be able to see the uh, lower classroom portion, but then the, uh, the storm shelter gym is what is uh, larger in the back. So uh, final color selections uh, haven't really been vetted. So, um, but that'll be part of the ongoing process with AECOM and, and DISD and, and HOG uh, throughout design. And this is a very, very rough schematic uh, volumetric. It's hard to show because the um, topography is so different. So, uh, but this is the gist uh, showing the existing school and the new uh, and, and offsetting the, the tan with the gray just uh, makes it more um, visible in the image, but uh, the, the final finishes and selections will, will occur uh, throughout. And this is the traffic management plan. Um, we believe that when it's coordinated with the, the final GC, the, the general contractor who will build the um, addition, that uh, most of the traffic flow will be uh, off to where the new addition is. I think there's plenty of space there for a general contractor to have lay down area without impacting um, existing drop-off and, and pickup routes. Um, but all of that will be coordinated with AECOM and uh, DISD when construction um, starts. And this is, this is a rough timeline. So uh, design is, is um, being um, implemented now. Permitting is in, uh, we, we always say everybody somewhat loses a little control during permitting, but we try to make it, uh, we try to make our response time as quick and efficient as possible. Um, and we've already met with uh, Dallas for a few things. So we're hitting those benchmarks. And of course, Samuel's definitely helping along the way for that. Uh, construction will be um, pretty much finalized by the selected GC. Uh, with opening occurring sometime around 2025, uh, but the the unknown time frame, so we can control design. The GC can pretty much control construction, but the purple permitting uh, schedule is is usually what begins to shift um, final opening dates. But uh, again, we we just try to do it as efficiently and as quickly as possible. And that is uh, the slide presentation for for us, Samuel. Samuel, okay. could you, this is Carl, could you go back to slide six? Okay, this is the uh, the traffic management plan for after the addition. And the idea in this case, obviously a very tight site, um, very, very limited queuing to keep cars on site. Um, and, and we're really not doing anything that would open up that in the site. And oh, by the way, there's a childcare. Uh, center that's there also just to just to make everything more fun. Um, the idea is to, if at all possible, to separate on it, on any school to separate the buses from the cars. Uh, they just don't like playing together uh, too good. So um, uh, the uh, the bus uh, queuing and loading will be on the I'll call it the south side of the building um, in that blue area there, and the parent pickup um, is on the. I guess that would be the west side of the building in that orange uh, stripe there. 
Uh, there is a conflict point between the two, but uh, the fortunate thing is we can we can stop traffic between the two um, and let the buses go um, go in and out um, to get them out of the way of the cars and stuff. Um, you know, it's uh, again um, it, it's a it's a neighborhood school um, that has evolved into um, more cars and probably were when it was built, obviously, in the way of pick up and drop off. So um, the traffic engineer has come up with this plan is working with the city. And we think this is probably the best it can be. Will there be some queuing on the street? There might end up being some, but I'm sure there it won't be any different than there is today. Um, and hopefully it'll get a little better. And stuff. So um, I, I, that's the end of the traffic management portion. I guess, Mary Carmen, we can uh, open it up now for questions. And if you'll explain how they can ask those questions again. Yes, of course, Carl. So you can ask questions by raising your hand with the raised hand icon, and we'll ask you to unmute so you can share your question, or you can uh, write your question in the chat and we will read it and get you an answer. So while we wait for some questions, I don't know if uh, Principal Casco, if there's anything else that you'd like to brag about uh, in the school. I'm sure there's plenty. Yeah, I could brag about like as Mr. Carl was saying that the original, I mean, we do have more traffic. We're really happy that our enrollment is increasing. It's been increasing ever since I've been here. So we're very fortunate that um, the community really likes what, um, what we're offering. And, and we keep on growing and that's very um, nice to experience because we're trying to serve this community and give um, our very best to the community. Great, not great for, for the traffic, but great for the school. <laughs> but hey, we're, we got down to 15 minutes. We're really good. It, it, I was gonna say, if you can get it to 15 minutes, I was principal for a day last week at Riley Elementary and it's 15 minutes. It's it's district wide. I've been doing this for 30 years and it's 15 minutes <laughs> in the afternoon. And if you've got it down to that, you, you're winning the battle. There you go. We set a record last week. It was 13 minutes. Oh, that's all I know. So see, no need for a traffic plan. <laughs> <laughs> But um, again, if there's any questions, if you want to raise your hand or uh, put it in the chat, uh, we'll be happy to take your questions. Doesn't, oh, there is a question. Uh, Ms. Hernandez, Lorena Hernandez, if you want to unmute. Yes, hi, good afternoon or evening, everyone. I'm um, the executive director for HOG and one of the questions I did have, and first of all, thank you all for attending today. Again, I think that one of the highlights for HOG is what I've already seen is um, true community involvement, uh, starting with that beautiful mural that uh, one of our parents actually helped uh, to uh, get started. And I think it's already completed, had some um, involvement from the kids. And so it's really nice to see how much community involvement is, has evolved over the years. And it's nice to see the upgrades that we're going to be receiving. I think it's definitely gonna poise new tech, uh, all new tech for even additional success that they've already seen. Um, question about the uh, traffic flow. It's not gonna impact the staff parking at all, is it? No, no. You know. Um, and, and obviously the principal knows it, it should be out out long before the staff parking would would be staff would be leaving. Um, if if need be the city we could use the staff parking lot to queue through, but we just don't like doing that because you may have some staff leaving right after school and we don't want to get in their way and stuff. So no, it shouldn't impact the staff parking. All right, thank you for that. Any other questions? Again, raise your hand or put it in the chat, either way. I have a question. What does this, the addition, increase the capacity to, if at all, based on the new classrooms? The 
the capacity should the capacity should stay the same. They're replacing um, classrooms that are being removed when we take away portables. It's a gotcha. one to one transfer. Gotcha. That's super helpful. And then as far as permitting goes, based on your experience, I know we have, I think if we saw budget in there two months, does that look right? What has, you know, how how can we as the community get involved to make sure you're getting responses and that it's moving forward? Uh, what's been helpful in that case? I know that's a question that communities often have and how can we be helpful in that process? Samuel, a, oh, sorry. Yeah, I was wondering who who uh, who's best suited to answer that. Actually, I think I think Chief Alfred and I could begin to address that question. The um, we talk and meet with the city weekly, but I um, uh, and we have conversations about the various processes that are involved to pull a building permit with the city of Dallas. Two months um, is a little conservative, uh, and so. I think we'll need to have a discussion about that on our schedule. Um, yeah. And oh, go ahead, Kathy. So I I think that um, because it's a building addition, it will need to go through an engineering review and um, a zoning review in addition to the building permit review. But we are actively meeting with the the various departments and directors from the city of Dallas on a regular basis to facilitate that communication. And I'll defer to Chief Alfred on recommendations for how the community can facilitate that process. Yeah, I, I think by supporting it, when these, these mailers come out, showing up to the CPC committee meeting, showing that you're in support of the zoning change, I think that always helps. You know, that's what they're kind of looking for if there's any pushback from the community. Uh, and uh, myself and Ms. Linehan, yeah, we have been meeting with the city uh you know weekly you know i come in you know every other month to check on them and so we're building that relationship to speed up this process i'm hoping we can shave two to three months off because i look back at my data previously from 2015 it was six to nine months on a process like this but we do think that was an anomaly there was a lot of change with the city staff and we're hoping we can get it back to maybe a four month range or, or so. But like I say, this is the first wave. So we're gonna hold the city accountable at this point. So uh, that's our strategy. And how can we as a community expect to hear updates if something is changing or if there is a delay, how will we find out about it and where can we look for that information? I think we'll keep the principal in touch. He's our first point of contact and letting him know on a regular basis, uh, him and our PM, I'm expecting them to, to meet, you know, on a regular basis uh, and keep him. And then in turn, the principal can keep the community informed of the changes. Thank you. Any other questions that might entertain? All right, if there aren't any other questions, I don't know, Chief Alfred, would you like to close this out? No, I'd just like to appreciate, uh, say again, I appreciate everyone for coming out. This is an exciting project. We're looking forward to this development at HOG and, uh, you know, forming a better relationship and a closer relationship, not better, but, uh, you know, like that. I like, you know, these community meetings, but I can't wait to be in person at this first groundbreaking. And then the most exciting part is the ribbon cutting, of course, you know, because we, we've made it through all this, these milestones. So again, look forward to seeing you guys in person on the next one. So thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. And everyone have a fantastic evening and uh, we'll see you at the next one. Thank you. Thank you.